So what's up, everybody? Uh, in the past, in it, <coughs> sorry, All right, I'll do it again. Well, it's hard to get started. Once I get started, you can't stop me. But it's always hard to get started. <laughs> What's up, everybody? We were just discussing on how to title this uh, particular topic, and I wanted to title it originally the six typical mistakes that beginner riders or inexperienced riders make. Uh, but then we decided to change that to six ways to improve your riding instantly, because those are six things that if you can master and make that part of your, you know, of your style, of your technique, of your method, or whatever, it's just gonna make everything better. So. Uh, the reason we decided to change that title is because I see people who have been riding a long time that sometimes still make those mistakes or could be doing this better and would see and once they do they see a dramatic positive change in their horses and so this is why we decided to change the title but it is also some uh, very common mistakes that people make when they start riding this is why that very early on if you can you know have some sort of mentorship from somebody that you know that you that 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 you really like that you really admire that has a lot of experience and then you can mirror the way that this ride that, that the rider use their hands and use their legs their seat and and just their body position and techniques and methods and you can mirror that and absorb that and develop that from early on then you're not stuck down the road trying to fix those bad habits and and that's which I think is gonna be harder to do than learning it right from the get-go but it's never too late so let's get into it the top six things that will help you improve your riding instantly so the first thing that you can do to improve your riding is going to be to learn how to use your hands on your reins okay it's very important to be able to hold your reins effectively in the way that you can go short that you can go one-handed, two-handed, long, wide, or narrow, depending on what you need to do. And you have to have very good control over your reins. This is something that, you know, to the extent of, of you know, of, of becoming really, really good at it, uh, if you don't have the opportunity to ride 10 to 12 horses a day, then having a set of reins on your couch when you're watching TV and playing with them uh, is gonna help you develop the use of your fingers around your reins because one of the things that I see a lot of beginners or inexperienced riders doing or sometimes you know experienced riders but are that are naturally physically strong type of people they tend to have a firm grip on their on their reins kind of holding the reins like handlebars and then I feel like you're missing various degrees of precision that you could have from holding the reins between your thumb and your forefinger and, uh, and, your, and your index finger. And then as you take a hold of your horse's face, you bring in the second finger, third finger, and if you need the fourth finger, which honestly, I very rarely use because I feel like I have more feel, you know, in those fir first four fingers. And I feel like my pinky is not long enough and not strong enough to really come into play. So I very rarely use it. Uh, but anyways, uh, so, you know, you have various level of precision by, by using one finger at a time as you take a hold. So you have, you have all of that progression into the contact that I think you're gonna be uh, you're going to be skipping some of those precision stages by having a firm grip on, on, on your reins. Uh, secondly, your hands is where softness is initiated, it's where softness starts. So if your hands are soft and you're using your fingers, even when you're pulling, well, this g is going to channel through your wrist, through your arm and down into your body and it's going to really, the horse is going to really feel that. So, uh, for example, I oftentimes I see someone riding that I'm giving a lesson or I'm giving a, a, a clinic and and you know and they they may be a little bit looser when they're at home and I'm not there criticizing them or judging them or trying to help them and there's just by themselves but a lot of the times uh, if you're competing or you're showing or whatever uh, and and you are you know you should be relaxed and but instead you are tight in your hands or or tight in your hands like this oftentimes if I just say hey 
paint that horse's neck like that. So the same motion as if you were painting up and down like that. This has a way of loosening up your wrist, which channels through your, through your arm and through your body all the way down to your seat. And instantly when I see someone do that, the horse really, you know, relax their neckline and instantly feel that just from that motion. Same thing with the other arm if you're one-handed. Sometimes instead of holding it up here, just let it dangle. Let it dangle really loose and, and, and that's gonna also channel through your body and help your horse relax. So if you have if you are if you have a horse that tends to be a little bit a little bit that, that needs to relax, that's a little bit touchy or a little fidgety, usually if you remember that every now and again pitch those rein loose, paint that horse's neck, relax your other arm or relax your arms and hold your thing hold your hands with just your fingers. So this way also it will allow you to release more. Okay, this is of, often a problem is, is, is if you have a firm grip on your reins, then you're gonna have a contact and you're gonna release if sometimes that may not be if you have a, a horse with a longer neck or whatever it may not be enough rein to really be loose as opposed to opening your fingers and lowering your hands a little bit more like that then that's going to give you a few more inches and make sure that you have a full release uh, uh, when you when you reward the horse and 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 also channel all that through your body and into your horse and have a more positive effect on your work the second tip i have for you to help you improve your riding is learning to sit on your pockets. A lot of beginners or a lot of people that are a little bit tense in their body or if they are riding horses that are a little bit tense don't allow themselves to really sit in their pockets and relax their body and this is where your center of gravity is. This is why that we want a toe out and a heel that is you know level with your with your hip and your and your shoulders and in order to do that you have to open up your thighs and sit on your pockets. A lot of a lot of the time I see people squeezing with their thighs kind of sitting forward a little bit and always having somewhat you know a fair amount of pressure in the stirrups and that's to stand still sometimes even some of them in contact like that I don't many times I, I I've seen this in clinics where I'm, I'm like explaining something to somebody where this person is standing still and is listening to me and should be yes listening like this but they're like this uh-huh you know because if they do this or they relax the horse goes away so that's what they have to do to stand still as you can see with my mare now if I have a little pressure in the stirrups she's gonna be going backwards so communication wise you're gonna be a lot you're gonna have a lot more precision from your your seat and your leg cues if you sit more in your pocket and 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 every now and again imagine that let's say there's a velcro underneath your boot and a velcro on the stirrup and what you want to do is every now and again is unstick that velcro so you want to be able to lift your feet off the stirrups every now and again just as a way to tell your horse I am relaxed so you can relax and, and as a way to to be in sort of neutral and and this way if there is a little pressure added to the stirrups your horse will feel that extra pressure and react accordingly so if you're always if you're always uh, sitting you know squeezing with your thigh pressing in your stirrups you're desensitizing your horse to a lot of very uh, precise cues that you know that that keeps you from progressing and going forward and also probably cause a lot of miscommunication uh, uh, you know between you and your horse when it comes time to loping off walking off or 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 backing up or or all of these things so again to summarize this uh, this second tip is sit a little bit more on your pockets so that you can have this good line from your shoulder to your hip down to your heels toes out and keep that pressure off uh, your stirrups as often and as much as you can so that it opens up your thighs puts your center of gravity in a better place for the horse to really be able to relax himself lift their shoulders and and balance themselves rather than squeezing with your thighs pressing in your stirrups which will cause your shoulders to, to lean forward and 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 move your center of gravity over the shoulder of the horse making it a lot a lot more uncomfortable and uh, and difficult for the horse to balance the third tip is going to somehow relate a lot to the first two tips, which is relaxing yourself. So, you know, we talked about having a relaxed seat, keeping your, your feet off the stirrups a little bit, relaxing your hands, using your fingers rather than holding the reins like handlebar, handlebars. So the, the, so the third tip is going to be the to be able to relax yourself. And, and I'm not just talking about not being stressed out. I'm talking about relax your mind and relax your state of mind because 
take for example uh, the if um, if you come into the arena and all you want to do is walk around for you know for 20 minutes there's very little chance that your horse is gonna trot off or lope off on its own and you you know it, 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 and or is gonna make this type of mistake but if you're in a show or you're in competition and your horse is a little bit nervous and you're you're about to do a pattern and your horse is a little bit nervous in the middle but you have to walk and you have to walk a couple steps and take the right lead departure then your horse uh, at that point in time you're going to be all you're going to be thinking about is is slope off and and you're going to be thinking about how it needs to be perfect and how it needs to go down and that's all you're thinking about versus if you were to just not think about it at all if you were to walk towards your lead departure during your competition during the show if you were to walk towards your lead departure in the same state of mind as if you were just coming into your own arena on a Sunday morning just to have a nice walk around with your horse. If you're able to have this state of mind in, in, in more intense training or intense competition, competition situations, you're gonna, you're gonna channel better energy and more relaxed energy into your horse and it's gonna be a lot easier to keep them, to, to have them wait for you to signal them or cue them onto the next uh, onto the maneuver that you want to do should it be a spin or a lead departure and a lot of horses get nervous in the show pen or uh, you know or in a competition they get nervous and so this is where they make they often make mistakes getting into a spin or or getting into a pivot or side passing or loping off or trotting off whatever maneuver you have to do when a horse is tight and you're in a show where you can't really do anything about it as, that you know probably normally wouldn't practice where you would take two hands fix them and then ask again and it would be fine you can't do that in the show so what changes often in the show is our state of mind and our mindset and and we often have just too much going on in our minds as far as you know thinking ahead about of what you're about to do and potentially thinking of what can go wrong or you know instead try that if you're if you're uh, if you're about to lope off into a circle and you're gonna you, you would like to be able to walk a couple strides to your lead departure and you feel your horse is really tight, try to walk off as if you were just going to walk around the arena and then you put your leg on and lope off. And uh, so it's all about a confident and relaxed state of mind. And if you can practice that at home until, uh, and then put it in practice when you get to the show pen, you're gonna see an instant um, improvement in your horse's demeanor when you get to the show. So the fourth tip I have for you is going to be cueing, cueing the horse to execute something. And again, those are not numbered down by order of priority or order of importance. They're all as important one another if this one is not more important than the others because cueing the horse, not, you know, not cueing the horse properly and, and doing this often can cause some pretty bad habits that are kind of hard to, uh, to get out of into horses. So, and one of the, the, the cueing, let's say, uh, bad habits that I often see that, that that I make it an art to do this as perfectly as possible, for example, is gonna be the lead departure. So a lead departure is, you, you should be able to apply the leg on the horse in order to set it up for the lead departure so that the horse knows there's a lead departure coming, but waits for the cue, which usually comes from the voice and maybe a little uh, change in, in your body position that cues the horse onto the lead departure. And if you combine it all at once, and this is what I often see people do is they combine everything at once where they put the leg, kiss and, the, and expect the horse to, uh, you know, to low puff all at the same time. But it, it comes, if it comes too much as a surprise, then the horse will do it, but he'll rush into it and it's not going to take the time to really set itself up to do it perfectly and it caused the horse to become a little bit overly sensitive and, uh, and, and touchy and then can become a problem to where the horse, if you want to make a left lead departure, but uh, but he's used to sort of rushing into it, then you, you haven't quite yet cued your horse to go on that left lead departure and then maybe they'll take a right lead departure or they'll, or they'll trot off instead of loping off or whatever, just because they didn't give you the time or allow you to set them up properly or you didn't set them up properly and so they didn't know for sure what they needed to do. So if you wanna be able to execute very good lead changes, lead departures, good maneuvers, whether or backup, um, you know, whatever maneuver you wanna do, 
you should always set your horse up first and this is and, and and this is something in practice that you can repeat and repeat and repeat is setting up your horse to do something and then not do it just set up to do something and not do it so you 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 know you develop the anticipation and you uh, but in, in 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 a positive way not in in a stressful way because after comes relaxation a reward and there's nothing stressful so setting a horse up for lead departure lead changes without changing should be part of your uh, daily routine and and then it's gonna allow you after that to properly cue your horse to execute and it's gonna make it a lot easier for your horse to execute that maneuver because you've got them waiting for you and set up perfectly with their energy in the right parts of their body ready to do something and if you feel that they're not then don't cue the horse to do the maneuvers then then work on that uh, on that setup until it's perfect then cue your horse number five on the list of things that you can do to improve your riding is going to be to have a you know not to, to try to, to not have a passenger type of state of mind and that means that uh, I see a lot of people um, you know loping off or loping around or or doing something and I can see that they're just sort of waiting for the horse to do something so that they can react to that so let's say the horse oh leans in so then they lift the shoulder leans out so they steer in so everything that they do is reacting to the horse's actions and to a certain extent it is it is the it is the right thing to do because uh, we're you know we're we're showing the horse how to to better do something and how to hold themselves and and how to react to our body movements and cues but it's more of having the state of mind of being ahead of the horse and always having a plan in your mind and a destination of where you're needing to go. This is why that, you know, too often, especially in reining or in other Western disciplines where there's no cow involved, well, we find ourselves often just not really looking forward, not having any destination or something to chase, which impairs our are like the natural forward drive and forward motion that uh, that the horses usually have and and then we impair that furthermore by looking down on our horses shoulders and and pulling into their face and so if you put all of those elements combined it kind of goes against the nature of you know of what we actually are trying to uh, to you know to develop in our horse and so forward motion and having a straight horse are the two uh, main element of of uh, of being able to do any maneuvers of any discipline successfully so it's very important to not impair that by by having a a reacting uh, approach to what the horse does and and looking down and just waiting for the horse to to do something wrong and us react to it because then the horse is not gonna feel uh, like he's gonna not gonna feel like you're in charge and and therefore he's gonna potentially be more stressed or more delinquent depending on the character or type of horse that you have but if you know exactly where you're headed such as I like to always tell my students to pick spots always pick spots in the arena of where you want to go and you can look down you should look down at your horse when you're working the shoulder working the hip working the body because it helps me challenge the energy through my through my mind of what I'm like I'm, I'm willing my horse to do this and and I want to channel that but I always have a mental picture of where I'm going and the, and what I'm expecting to do on my way there or once I get there and that is very very important this way uh, this way it allows you to be a step ahead of your horse and take action versus always reacting to your horse and another way to do that is is at some point in time you should know your horse well enough to to be a step ahead as if a horse let's say tends to uh, to lean in always at this place or steer out uh, steer or, 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 or um, uh, pull out of the circle in a certain place or in a straight line they pull that way or they drop their shoulder that way well if you know that ahead of time you can anticipate that 
uh, you know, and be, uh, you can, or, or, you know, instead of waiting for the horse to do something and then reacting to that. So be a step ahead of the horse so that you can anticipate it and, and take charge. And eventually, the more that you take charge and the more that you are a step ahead of your horse, the more that they will feel safe and, uh, and allow you to, to pilot them in any direction that you want to. Last tip, but not least, is going to be the release. So releasing your horse after a command or a cue in order to reward them and, and indicate to them that they executed the, the whatever you asked properly is going to be very important. And there's and there's you know there's there's various ways to do that. But the way that I like to release my reins after a collection is going to be in the same way as if I would sort of pitch my reins. Let's say that I would want to just literally throw my reins over the head of the horse but I don't but in this way so this way it, it, it like really relaxing my wrist throwing my reins which relaxes through my arms and sends a signal all the way through my body that the horse really feels that I've released and I've rewarded my horse for having done something I've been done something right and if you are always in the contact I see too many people sort of hanging in the face of their horses all the time and never really releasing so first so 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 that sort of desensitizes the horse makes them a little bit numb makes them a little bit heavy and it also uh, it also never gives them the the, uh, the 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 autonomy of holding themselves together they are always gonna be you know relying on you to to support them and then when you will release them they will feel lost so it's very important to release the horse as much as possible especially when working on collection I like to see developing collection and the release as coming up for air when going underwater so when you first start going underwater and you've never really done it you can maybe stay 15 20 seconds but then you got to really come up for air so if you're training to be able to stay you know in a collection for a horse to stay in a collection longer the same as if you were training to stay underwater well well, when you need to come up for air at some point in time I'm gonna have to let you come and take a breath and then go back deep again and so to, to let your horse come up for a breath is very important so if you felt that your horse gave you something positive and and even and if you feel you release they will get undone well still release them and just take them again until you can release them and leave them loose then you know that you've successfully to show them how to hold themselves and they're doing it because they don't have always something to lean on and you're not always hanging into their face so so being able to really release your horse in a way where you really sort of pitch them that's going to have a very good positive effect through your body and help them relax and understand that they've been rewarded for doing something right even if it's a little something right and you can build on that until it becomes something great so releasing your horse is going to be my final tip for the day and i hope that you found this very helpful um just keep it rolling but remind me what did you tell me earlier Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, now keep going. And, uh, and I should say, you know, another, another common problem that I see or, 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 or if you don't necessarily have, don't really have problems or, or, or you're, you don't feel like you're, you know, making mistakes and you have enough experience, but you would like to have, you know, more options and progress and, and find ways or things to improve is, is visit, uh, visit my online training website where there's gonna to be tons of drills and exercises that you can do that's gonna help you change from your routine because too often, you know, people come out and they have a very mundane, simple routine and the horse are, you know, are sort of bored with that. And if you feel like you're stuck a little bit in the routine and you want to have some drills and exercises, things to change it up and develop your horse to be more supple, more strong, more relaxed, all of the things that bug you that you wish that you could improve into your horse or into yourself, I'm hoping that you can find Plenty videos on that on our subscription channel. If not, you just shoot me a message. I'm always happy to have some ideas, some insights from the subscribers or for the people interested potentially in subscribing, but wanted to make sure that there's gonna be some content that they will benefit from in there. So feedback is greatly appreciated and um, appreciate you for tuning in and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.